So in this video we'll look at the alkanes and we'll look at how to, the naming system for them, the IUPAC naming system for them and we'll also look at the uh, a thing called structural isomer so that was just at the end of the last video. So if you look at this again to go to briefly look over you know the first alkane if it just had one carbon in it it would be meth in so the meth part the m-e-t-h indicates that it has one carbon the a-n-e part the n part of methane indicates that there is only single single carbon carbon bonds uh, so that's the first little bit uh, just to recall that and then you if you have two carbons it would be eth three carbons it would be prop four carbons would be but and that's where you come to this one where you have butane butane and um, being a four carbon structure if you like and um, so as you see here there is n butane and don't worry about the n part just for now we don't actually use the n anymore so or at least the most modern way of naming them but there is C4H10 and again it's an alkane because it assumes some formula and that formula is of course CNH2N plus 2. And what that essentially means is that for every one carbon N there will be two times that number plus two of hydrogens. So that's the two N plus two right there. So this is of course uh, butane. Now we can actually number these carbons as one, two, three, four. Uh, so there's the four carbons. And those little numbers are useful then if you're naming the compound or if there's something off one of these carbons other than a hydrogen. So the order is very important. Number one, once you start at the end of a molecule, you continue to the other end using each carbon as a link and only carbons as the link, only name, only use numbers to describe them. That's number one. Number two is it does not matter which side of the molecule that you start from, of course. Please remember, and it's very easy when you get caught up with writing chemistry all the time, please remember that these molecules are all 3D. These are all 3D even though we write them on this flat form if you like or 2D form. Please remember that those hydrogens, some of them are coming out towards us, some of them are pushing away from us uh, and the carbons as well are not in a straight row of course. Uh, if you were to look at their geometry and you could think of a geometry as how the atoms are arranged, the carbons themselves would be in an up down structure like so. So don't forget that these are 3D, 3D, 3D. You can turn them any which way, therefore it wouldn't make sense on a page if we intrinsically always call this one one and this one this. That's not the important thing. It's just important that you start at one end. So the molecule could be drawn any which way. You could turn that molecule around and around and around, of course. So please remember that. Uh, the but part stands for the 4 and the ANE stands for the fact that the carbon carbons are all single bonds. And N is not normally what we use anymore. If, if it is, I'll show you what I mean. It used to be important now as we look at structural isomers. Now an isomer is, iso kind of means the same, the same parts if you like, but they're rearranged. So the structure is different. They have the same molecular formula but different structural formula and that's what we're going to look at in this video mostly. Now just to remember as well that I mentioned these last, in the last video as well but alkyl groups are effectively alkanes without one hydrogen you see. So there's the methyl group, the ethyl group, the propyl group, the butyl group and the pentyl group. So instead of it being methane, it ends in YL. Instead of being ethane, it ends in YL. Now what it means is, you see, if you were to draw this, you would have a carbon and you would have three hydrogens off it. One, two, and three. And now you have one, you remember carbon always has to have four bonds. So you see there's one bond there free to bond with something else. 
And that, that's why it's considered to be an alkyl group. We'll always attach this on to something or it will end in a hydrogen or it'll end in another carbon and three hydrogen or another two carbons and five hydrogen or whatever. So it like, if you like, this is like a free spot, a juncture that this, mo this part of a molecule can be attached to some smaller or larger molecule. A lot of the time we're talking about larger molecules uh, when we say the alkyl group because they're off something. Uh, alkyl just stands for the alkane part again, but remember it's an alkane without one of its hydrogens. So like methane would have four hydrogens, ethane would have six hydrogens, propane would have eight hydrogens, butane would have ten hydrogens as we just saw. So that's just what the alkyl groups are. Now to know those is useful. I mean, you know, when you read the syllabus, you must always remember that that's the bare minimum. But like, if you were to name compounds, you should be able to name these alkyl groups for, for quite simply to make the course easier, to make chemistry easier. So it's quite simply an alkane with one hydrogen removed. And we will then, you see, attach that on somewhere. So in this case, now you see this bottom bar, so we'll, it's that iso part, we're just going to leave that out. Now, if you remember earlier, you see that C4H10 right here. That's the same as what we had um, earlier. We had exactly the same thing. We had C4H10. But the difference is here, instead of it being four carbons in a row, as it was earlier, and you had yourself butane, here we have, we do not have them in a row. They're not in a continuous chain. There's one, one, two, three, in a straight chain, and then you have this part coming off them. This one is not a continuous, not part, you have to go off on a side branch. And that's actually what that's called, a branch. So anytime you see branching in organic chemistry, uh, this is the type of thing we're talking about. So there's a branch, and that's branching. Now that branch is where the alkyl group comes in in this case. So if we were to name this compound, you have one, two, three carbons in a straight line. So three, you think to yourself, what's the prefix? And you can open that up and have that in front of you. You can use the notes there of the prefixes. For pre, it's prop. So it's P-R-O-P, prop. And it's an alkane, so it'll be A and E. So that's the, if you like, the parent chain, the longest continuous chain. And then you have this branch off it. And that branch is a methyl group. So you could write that beside it. Why is it methyl? Well, look at it. It's, it's, it's methane without one of those hydrogens. One of its hydrogens is replaced by this big part of a molecule here, right here. You see? So this, that's why that's considered this. That's a methyl group. Now, how you name that is you put the methyl or the branch at before the parent chain. It's a bit like your first name before your parent's name eh? or surname. So methyl propane. Now, normally you will indicate where that, so once you write that as a methyl propane, everyone that reads chemistry will know that this is a branch methyl of this parent chain. But a lot of the time people want to know what, uh, uh, or you should indicate what carbon it's off. Now methyl is an interesting one, I'll show you in a second, but in any case, I'm not confused at this point. One, two, three. So if we were to name them that way, that would still be off carbon too. Now if we started on this side, which is always important to remember, you get the longest continuum. Look at one, two, three. If we go back on that way, we still end up with number two in the middle, you see? So it's not like this naming system can, can be represent a different molecule. Because again, always remember, they're 3D. So therefore, there's number two, and there's the methyl group of it. So it's 2-methyl, and that indicates that the methyl group is off the second carbon, propane. And that's where that name comes from there. Now all this, all this takes is a bit of practice when you're naming compounds. It is, it is quite straightforward really, but it, 
what, what we will look at is naming them in this sort of a systematic way. And it's, it's great, it's always the same thing then. Um, it doesn't get any more difficult if we were to, um, if I can, if I can skip out of that for a second and go down to in naming them, let's say, if we were to go to I just want to show you some more straightforward ones first. You find the longest chain is always the first rule. Always find the longest chain. It does not have to be straight, which is really important. Count the not, not, not longest chain of carbons, continuous chain that do not are not broken by any other atom. And identify the side branches. You would have a very simple side branch there, either methyl. And if the side branch occurs more than once, you indicate the number of, well, we'll see that with di, tri, and three. And we will, we will put these before the longest chain, uh, as you'll see in a second now. And four, when it's necessary, is indicate the side branches comes by counting from the end of the main chain that gives the lowest possible number. You see earlier in our example, it didn't really matter because they were all effectively, uh, both counting from either end left it as number two. So like sometimes that's known as N hexane, but like I say, we, 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 the IUPAC system now, you just call that hexane. But you see this one, and again, isohexane, I would ignore that for modern naming of compounds. 2-methylpentane. Now why is that 2-methylpentane? Well, what they do is they say that's one, or like color, change the color of pen here. That's one, two, three, four, five. So they counted the longest continuous, which just happens to be a straight line here. One, two, three, four, five. If you tried, you could also go one, two, three, four, five. That would also work, and that would also be correct. Because you see this group is identical to that group. So you don't change how it's arranged just because you write it on a page. So that's CH3, one, look at this three hydrogen there, and the three hydrogens off that, we were to draw them out. So in any case, the longest chain, one, two, three, four, five, pick that and there's no longer one, there's one equal to it, but we have the longest one. Equal as in if we started here, we counted this as one, two, three, four, five. But, uh, so what we'll do, uh, perhaps, I'm not laser pointer, you see what I mean, like this part here, if we were starting here, we could count one, two, three, four, five, but it's not longer. So it's not like you have to worry about, it. just pick the longest one. If the one equal to it, you can pick whichever one you prefer. Uh, so that's quite important to remember. Now here, one, two, three, four, five. And if you look closely, that's a CH3, which is a methyl group. Now what we could have done, we could have counted from this side. One, two, three, four, five. Now why would that be wrong? from what I just said a second ago. What do you need to make sure? That when there's a group like this part here, this methyl group off the main chain, you need to make sure that the number, the carbon number is as low as possible. So if I count from this end, it'd be one, two, three, four, five. That would make that one four. So it'd be methyl, it'd be, it'd be four methyl. Whereas if I count from this side, one, two, three, four, five, it's two methyl. You see? Uh, likewise, if we looked at this one, you could count one, two, three, four, five. Again, that would be number three there. You count the other end, one, two, three, four, five. Again, that middle one there, that leaves it as three. So again, that's three methyl. Now this one happens to be a methyl as well. Um, and to try these, you, you can you can see that that would be the case for those two. Uh, there's two. There's some more examples: two two dimethylbutane, two two. You see, there's two two three again. That's that's numbered as one two three and four, um, and that that shows you then. So what I'll do is I'll give you some examples of that to try today, and if you've got the hang of that naming system. Uh, and then we'll come back and we'll have a look at those again.